Chapter on the Statement of Allah Why then did not the believers, men and women, when you heard it, the slander, think good of their own people and say, This charge is an obvious lie. Up to, then with Allah, they are the liars. Quran, Chapter 24, Verse 12 to 13 Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet peace be upon him. Whenever Allah's Messenger peace be upon him intended to go on a journey, he would to draw lots among his wives and would take with him the one on whom the lot fell. Once he drew lots when he wanted to carry out a ghazwa, and the lot fell upon me. So I proceeded with Allah's Messenger peace be upon him after Allah's order of veiling the women had been revealed. And thus I was carried in my haudaj on a camel and dismounted while still in it. We carried on our journey, and when Allah's Messenger peace be upon him had finished his ghazwa and returned, and we approached al Madina, Allah's Messenger peace be upon him ordered to proceed at night. When the army was ordered to resume the homeward journey, I got up and walked on till I left the army camp behind to answer the call of nature. After finishing, I went towards my haudaj, but behold, a necklace of mine made of jazz, asfar, a kind of black bead, was broken and I looked for it, and my search for it detained me. The group of people who used to carry me on the camel came and carried my haudaj on the back of my camel on which I was riding, thinking that I was therein. At that time, women were light in weight and thin and lean, for they used to eat little food. So those people did not feel the difference in the heaviness of the haudaj lifting it up, and I was still a young lady, less than fifteen years old. They drove away the camel and proceeded. Then I found my necklace after the army had gone. I came to their camp, but found nobody therein, so I went to the place where I used to stay, thinking that they would discover my absence and come back in my search. While I was sitting at my place, I felt sleepy and slept. Safwan bin al-Mu'attal al-Sulami al-Zakhwani was behind the army. He had started in the last part of the night and reached my stationing place in the morning. When he saw the figure of a sleeping person, he came to me and recognized me on seeing me, for he used to see me before veiling. I got up because of his saying, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Truly to Allah we belong, and truly to Him we shall return, which He uttered on recognizing me. I covered my face with my garment, and by Allah He did not say to me a single word except, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon, till He made His she-camel kneel down, whereupon He put His leg on the front legs of the camel, and I mounted it. Then Safan set out walking, leading the she-camel that was carrying me by the rope till we reached the army who had halted to take rest at midday. Then whoever was meant for destruction fell into destruction. Some people accused me falsely, and the leader of the false accusers was Abdullah bin Urbayy bin Salul. After this, we arrived at al Madina, and I became ill for one month, while the people were spreading the forged statements of the people who brought forth the slander, and I was not aware of anything thereof. But what aroused my doubt while I was sick was that I was no longer receiving from Allah's Messenger peace be upon him the same kindness as I used to receive when I fell sick. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him would enter upon me, say a greeting, and add, How is that lady? And then depart. That aroused my suspicion, but I was not aware of the propagated evil till I recovered from my ailment. I went out with Ummi Mistah to answer the call of nature towards Al-Manasi, the place where we used to relieve ourselves, and we used not to go out for this purpose except from night to night. And that was before we had lavatories close to our houses, and this habit of ours was similar to the habit of the old Arabs living in the deserts or in the tents concerning the evacuation of the bowels for we considered it troublesome and harmful to take lavatories in the houses. So I went out with Ummi Mistah, who was the daughter of Abi Ruhm bin Abdi Manaf, and her mother was the daughter of Sakhr bin Amir, who was the aunt of Abi Bakr as-Siddiq. 
and her son was Mislar bin Rothatha. When we had finished, Umi Mislar and I came back towards my house. Umi Mislar stumbled over her robe, whereupon she said, Let Mislar be ruined. I said to her, You are saying a bad word. Why are you abusing a man who took part in the Battle of Badr? She said, O Hanta, you there, didn't you hear what he has said? I said, And what did he say? Then she told me the rumors of the false accusers, which added to my ailment. When I returned home, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came to me, and after greeting, he said, How is that lady? I said, Will you allow me to go to my parents? At that time, I intended to be sure of the news through them. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, allowed me, and I went to my parents and asked my mother, O my mother, what are the people talking about? My mother said, O my daughter, don't worry much about this matter. By Allah, there is no charming lady who is loved by her husband who has other wives, but that those wives would find fault with her or forge false news about her. I said, Subhanallah, are the people really talking of this matter? That night, I kept on weeping and could not sleep till morning. My tears never stopped, nor did I sleep, and morning broke while I was still weeping. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, called Ali ibn Abi Talib and Uthama bin Zayd. May Allah be pleased with them. When he saw the divine revelation delayed, in order to console them as to the idea of divorcing his wife, Usama bin Zayd told Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, of what he knew of the good reputation of his wives, and added, O Allah's Messenger, keep your wife, for by Allah, we do not know anything about her but good. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, O Allah's Messenger, Allah does not impose restrictions on you, and there are many of women other than she, yet you may ask the women's servant who will tell you the truth. Raisha added, So Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, called for Barida and said, O Barida, did you ever see anything which might have aroused your suspicion as regards Raisha? Barida said, By Allah, who has sent you with the truth, I have never seen anything faulty except that she is a girl of immature age who sometimes sleeps and leaves the dough of her family unprotected so that the domestic goats come and eat it. So Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, got up and addressed the people and asked for somebody who would support him in punishing Abdullah bin Arbay bin Salul. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, while on the pulpit, said, O Muslims, who will support me to punish that man, Abdullah bin Arbay bin Salul, who has hurt me by slandering the reputation of my family? By Allah, I know nothing except good about my family and they have accused a person about whom I know nothing except good, and he never entered my house except in my company. Sa'ad bin Mu'adh al-Ansari got up and said, O Allah's Messenger, by Allah, I will relieve you from him. If he be from the tribe of Bani al-Aws, then I will chop his head off. And if that man is from our brethren, the Khazraj, then order us, and we will fulfill your order. On that, Sa'ad bin Urbada, chief of the Khazraj, and before this incident, he had been a pious man, got up, motivated by his zeal for his tribe. He said to Sa'ad bin Mu'adh, By Allah, the Eternal, you have told a lie. You cannot kill him, and you will never be able to kill him. On that, Usaid bin Hudayr, the cousin of Sa'ad bin Mu'adh, got up and said to Sa'ad bin Urbada, you are a liar. By Allah, the Eternal, we will surely kill him. And you are a hypocrite, defending the hypocrites. On this, two tribes of Al-Aws and Al-Khazraj got excited till they were on the point of fighting with each other while Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was standing on the pulpit. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, continued quietening them till they became silent, whereupon he became silent too. On that day, I kept on weeping so much that neither did my tears stop, nor could I sleep. In the morning, my parents were with me, and I had wept for two nights and a day without sleeping, and with incessant tears, till they thought that my liver would burst with weeping. While they were with me, 
and I was weeping, an Ansari woman asked permission to see me. I admitted her, and she sat and started weeping with me. While I was in that state, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came to us, greeted, and sat down. He had never sat with me since the day they forced the accusation. No divine revelation regarding my case came to him for a month. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, recited the Tashahud after he had sat down and then said, Then after, O Aisha, I have been informed such and such about you. If you are innocent, Allah will reveal your innocence. And if you have committed a sin, then repent to Allah and ask Him to forgive you. For when a person confesses his sin and asks Allah for forgiveness, Allah accepts his repentance. When Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, had finished his speech, my tears ceased completely, and there remained not even a single drop of it. Then I requested my father, reply to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, on my behalf. He said, By Allah, I do not know what to say to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. Then I said to my mother, Reply to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. She said, I do not know what to say to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. I was a young girl and did not have much knowledge of the Qur'an. I said, By Allah, I know that you heard the story of the ifk, so much so that it has been planted in your minds, and you have taken it as a truth. Now, if I tell you I am innocent, and Allah knows that I am innocent, you will not believe me. And if I confess to you falsely that I am guilty, and Allah knows that I am innocent, you would believe me. By Allah, I cannot find of you and I an example except that of Yusuf's, Joseph's father, that is, Ya'qub, Jacob, peace be upon him. So for me, patience is most fitting, and it is Allah alone whose help can be sought against the lie which you describe. Quran, chapter 12, verse 18. Then I turned to the other side and lay on my bed, and I knew that I was innocent, and that Allah would reveal my innocence. But by Allah, I never thought that Allah would send down divine revelation about my affair that would be recited forever, as I considered myself too inferior to be talked off by Allah with something that was to be recited. But I hoped that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, might have a vision in which Allah would prove my innocence. By Allah, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, had not left his seat, and nobody had left the house, when the divine revelation came to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. So there overtook him the same state which used to overtake him when he used to receive divine revelation. He was sweating so much so, that the drops of sweat were dropping like pearls, though it was a cold wintry day. And when that state of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was over, he was smiling. And the first word he said was, Aisha, Allah has declared your innocence. My mother said to me, Get up and go to him. I said, By Allah, I will not go to him, and I will not thank anybody but Allah. So Allah revealed, Verily, those who brought forth the slander against Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, are a group among you. Consider it not a bad. Quran Chapter 24, verse 11 to 20. When Allah revealed this declaration of my innocence, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, who used to provide for Mislah bin Urthatha because of his kinship and poverty, said, By Allah, I will never provide for Mislah anything after what he has said about Aisha. So Allah revealed, And let not those among you who are blessed with graces and wealth swear not to give any sort of help to their kinsmen, al-masakin, poor, and those who left their homes for Allah's cause, let them pardon and forgive. Do you not love that Allah should forgive you? And Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. Quran, chapter 24, verse 22. Abu Bakr said, Yes, by Allah, I like that Allah should forgive me and resumed giving Mislah the aid he used to give him before, by saying, By Allah, I will never withhold it from him at all. Aisha further said, 
Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, also asked Zainab bint Jahash about my saying, O Zainab, what do you know, and what did you see? She replied, O Allah's Messenger, I refrain to claim hearing or seeing what I have not heard or seen. I know nothing except goodness about Aisha. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, added, Of all the wives of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, Zainab was competing with me in her beauty and the Prophet's love. Yet, Allah protected her from being malicious, for she had piety. But her sister, Hamma, kept on fighting on her behalf. So she was destroyed as were those who invented and spread the slander. Footnote The Shahud That is, La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and that Muhammad is Allah's messenger.